Biggest Moral Dilemmas in Science Number 5. Should we give animals rights? As with all hot debates, there are also two extremes on this topic. On one side, animal rights advocates believe that animals must have equal or at least similar rights to human beings. They also say that animals should be free from abuse and captivity. No animal should be used for labour or human consumption, and also wildlife habitats should be protected. On the other side, there are those who believe that human species are the dominant species, thus should feel free to use animals as a food source or any other real need. But let's not forget that there are also many individuals who fall somewhere between these two views. Many support the cause of animal rights and at the same time are meat consumers, or would feel bad about the fact that animals are regularly killed to provide us food, but view animal laboratory testing essential to the development of medicine. If our goal is to minimise suffering in any animal, is it time to give animals equal rights to our own? What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments section. Number 4. Should we geoengineer the planet? According to the latest UN climate report, we only have 11 to 12 years to stop polluting our planet or we will face a catastrophic, irreversible situation. Is it the right time for immediate and drastic action before it gets too late? The most common version that one hears on TV or reads on the internet on how we should approach this problem is to drastically reduce the amount of carbon dioxide emissions, but our addiction to fossil fuels makes this objective seem very unreachable. But what if there was another approach to this problem? Enter geoengineering, the deliberate large-scale manipulation of an environmental process that affects the Earth's climate in an attempt to counteract the effects of global warming. The ideas range from sucking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere to deploying a stratospheric parasol that would bounce the sun's warming rays back out into space. Some have been field tested, or soon will be. But while most researchers agree that re-engineering is a potential reliable approach, we need to ask, is it right to interfere with our planet on this level? Have we already done it? By polluting our planet so much in the last decade in the first place, humanity has put our planet's biosphere balance into great risk. Why should reversing that be any different? Number 3. Is it ethical to use robots to kill people in wars? Some scholars argue that using robots to kill in war is unethical. There are two prominent arguments about that. One argument is that if we use robot soldiers, the cost of war will fall dramatically, making future wars more likely. Human casualties generate political pressure, which forces the involved parties to end the war. But the same thing would not happen if we started using robots, because almost nobody would show the same level of affection for a robot as we do for a human being. The second argument is that currently, robots are not as capable of distinguishing between civilians and enemy combatants. Consequently, robots would have the potential to kill innocent civilians. Maybe in the near future, we will have super-intelligent AI and robots will do our jobs better than we do. But again, let's not forget about the first argument that we mentioned earlier. Other scholars argue that using robots to kill in war is actually more ethical than not using men. The first argument is that we are using human soldiers in wars and we are putting their lives at risk, so we should use robots instead of people in wars. Military and political leaders always face the pressure of reducing casualties in a war, and using robots will be one way of achieving that objective. A second argument for the use of robots is that they lack emotions, thus they would only act within the range of parameters they were initially programmed to do, but that's just opening Pandora's box. Number 2. Should we use gene editing on human embryos? There are some traits that most people want for their kids. These traits usually have to do with the physical and mental health of their child, and a lot of people will probably agree on the idea of using gene editing to avoid genetic disorders. But is it right, ethically, to use gene editing technology for cases that have nothing to do with health issues at all? The idea of shaping future generations towards an imagined ideal of beauty and strength is something that makes people feel uncomfortable. Even if we say no to gene editing, deciding to do nothing is a decision in itself. We may like to think of humans as perfect products that should not be touched, but nature's creations are full of mistakes, and evolution's way of getting rid of the mistakes is to let children suffer and die young. Number 1. Should we stop doing science? Let's face it, we can never stop doing science. Being competitive is in our nature, and we know that we have always used developments in science to be more competitive compared to others. 
Many countries use the latest developments in technology to have stronger militaries compared to other countries, and companies use the latest technological developments to become more competitive so it can increase their revenue. We can't stop doing science, even if the fate of humanity rested on that premise.